everybody, this is uh, Mr. Peoples here, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Abraham Lincoln and uh, kind of a biography of him before he became president. Give you guys some background information about his life before presidency. Um, the picture you see here is one of the earliest pictures of Abraham Lincoln, and one of the things I like to uh, point out in this picture is look at the size of his hand. It is gigantic, and uh, that shows one of the things that we know a lot about Abraham Lincoln is that he was quite strong even though he was very skinny uh, and you can see those hands being so large uh, from his time when he used to split rails he used to chop wood with those those hands and so you can see uh, the hands would be quite strong strong from that all right uh, what we have here uh, Abraham Lincoln was born on February 12th 1809 uh, he was born near a town called Hodgenville, Kentucky. His father uh, is pictured there on the left, and his mother on the right. We don't actually have any photographs of his mother uh, because uh, she died so early after he was born. Uh, he has an older sister named Sarah, and in 1812, when he's three years old, he has a younger brother uh, named Thomas, uh, but that brother dies as a baby which wasn't uncommon for the time period. Uh, in 1816, when he is, uh, well, let's see here, when he's seven years old, uh, the Lincoln family moves to Indiana, uh, and they uh, try to farm. Uh, two years later, in 1818, Lincoln is kicked in the head by a horse, uh, almost dies, uh, and in some pictures, as you see uh, during the Civil War period when he was president, it looks almost as if he's got uh, one eye that's uh, crossed. And uh, a lot of people believe that that goes back to the time from when he was kicked in the head by a horse. That same year, in 1818, his mother Nancy dies from milk sickness. Um, it was common back then, uh, and it was a very painful and horrible way to die. Uh, and he was only nine years old, and he witnessed his mother uh, dealing with this sickness, and not only his mother, but his uh, grandparents as well. The next year, his father marries another uh, woman by the name of Sarah Johnston. She has three children of her own, uh, and Sarah Johnston Lincoln uh, encourages Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, to read. Uh, and so he's got a book in his hand whenever he can. Uh, he doesn't finish like high school as we know it today. He goes up to about the fifth or sixth grade, uh, but from there he l teaches himself uh, through the books that he re reads. Uh, by 1824, at 15 years old, Lincoln's father hires him out to plow and plant uh, farms for other families. Lincoln doesn't like this. Farming is not on his list of th favorite things he likes to do. Uh, and oftentimes he scolded for taking a break and reading his book when he should be reading. Uh, and because of that, Abraham and his father Thomas uh, tend to always butt heads. They always get in trouble. Uh, uh, their relationship is very strained uh, through the course of Abraham's life. These are some of the books Lincoln read numerous times as a kid. Uh, of course, the Bible, um, The Adventures of Robinson Crusoe, uh, Pilgrim's Progress, and then Aesop's Fables. Those are just some of the books he read. Now in 1828, when he, I believe, is 19, his uh, sister, Sarah, dies giving birth. Uh, that same year, Lincoln takes a flatboat to New Orleans uh, and witnesses a slave auction. And a lot of historians believe that this is where uh, Lincoln's dislike of slavery starts to uh, starts to become uh, a part of his personality. Uh, in 1830 his family moves to Illinois but he starts to separate now from his family. He starts to move on as an adult and try to make uh, uh, a living on his own and so in 1831 when he's 21 he moves to a, a small small town called New Salem, Illinois. When he gets there he becomes a store clerk working for uh, a man that owns a general store um, and in the next three years, he, he works in a couple of these general stores, and the owners, uh, their, their stores fail. And so he has to find new jobs, and uh, he works as a postmaster, which is uh, kind of the guy that's in charge of the mail, and a surveyor, uh, which is uh, kind of a map maker. 
Uh, and uh, during this time, Lincoln runs for state legislature. He wants to become a lawmaker, wants to be part of the legislature, uh, but he loses. Uh, very soon after that, though, he attempts again, gives it another shot, and uh, he wins his second attempt. Uh, a small little war known as the Black Hawk War breaks out, and Abraham Lincoln is named a captain of a group of soldiers. Uh, captain was a rank that was voted on, voted upon by other soldiers, so that meant that his soldiers respected him. Um, he never really saw any combat. Uh, he, he often said that his the biggest fights were the fights with the mosquitoes that he would have in the woods of Illinois. Uh, he also begins to study law at this point. He starts to uh, want to become a lawyer, and so he starts reading all of the law books that he can get his hands on. And while he's in New Salem, uh, he, he sparks a relationship with a, a girl named Ann Rutledge. We don't know a whole lot about this relationship, but we do know that there was some type of relationship there. Um, and what we also know is that in 1835, this Ann Rutledge dies from a, a, a something called typhoid fever at the age of 22 years old. Um, very young, and uh, Lincoln is very sad about this. And uh, there are some historians that believe that Ann Rutledge was Abraham Lincoln's first true love. Um, and uh, because of that, um, they, they argue that, uh, that a lot of his depression and a lot of his Sadness, as an adult, comes from when his mother died, comes from when his sister passed away, comes from when uh, these close women near him die. Uh, in 1836, he's reelected. Uh, he gains his law license, and he moves to Springfield, Illinois, which becomes his home and the place where he lives uh, up until he's president, and now he is also buried there as well. In 1837, he brings the state capital to Springfield, and so today, even today, the capital of Illinois is Springfield, Illinois, and so there's a capital building there and everything. It's where the laws are made. Um, he also proposes to a woman named Mary Owens, but he's turned down, and as far as uh, the historians know is that this was kind of a proposal to a woman that had no interest in him, uh, and he didn't really have much interest in her, but he thought it was something that a politician should do is marry and settle down. Uh, he just uh, picked someone that he wasn't really interested in and she wasn't really interested in him either. Uh, in 1839 he travels what was called the circuit as a lawyer which means he would travel from county to county to the different courthouses and uh, work on those cases and uh, he comes back to Springfield and at a dance in Springfield he meets Miss Mary Todd from Kentucky. Um, Mary Todd is a very well-known person. Uh, she was kind of the person that a lot of young men were looking for, uh, for in a wife. Uh, plus she had very strong opinions, was v very much into politics, and uh, she saw Abraham Lincoln as someone that uh, she adored. And in 1840, Abraham Lincoln engages, uh, becomes engaged to Mary Todd, asks him to marry, asks her to marry him. Um, there's a picture of Mary Todd uh, as a younger lady. Um, now, in 1841, Lincoln breaks up his engagement with Mary Todd. Nobody really knows why. A lot of some historians believe that a young woman came into town that Lincoln uh, fell in love with, and because of that, he broke off the engagement with Mary Todd because he didn't feel like he was being honest to her. Um, but he had never talked to the, he had never spoken to this young girl. Um, and after breaking off the engagement, he realized what a mistake that was. And so in 1842, uh, he becomes engaged to Mary Todd again. And so he asks her again to marry him, and she again says yes. In 1842, this is kind of interesting, Lincoln is challenged to a duel. That's the old thing where you, two men would line up back to back, each with a pistol in their hand, and they would walk 10 or 15 paces, turn and shoot. Um, this doesn't happen. Lincoln doesn't take part in the duel. He's able to smooth things over with the person that challenged him. Um, but kind of interesting that he was challenged to a duel to know that. 1842, he also marries Mary Todd. And the next year he runs for U.S. Senate, or excuse me, U.S. House, but he loses. 
Uh, now, U.S. House is the federal lawmakers, the, the United States lawmakers, and uh, he loses that election, uh, but that same year his son Robert is born. Now, in 1844, they move into the Springfield home, which you, you can see in the little booklet I have uh, in the classroom. In 1846, his uh, second son, Edward, is born, and that year he is finally elected to the United States House of Representatives. In eight, 1848, there was a uh, war kind of brewing between Mexico and America, and uh, Abraham Lincoln gives a speech against the Mexican-American War. This was very unpopular. There were a lot of people that wanted to go to war at that time with Mexico, and Abraham Lincoln was one that was against it. Uh, and he was against it because he thought that the war was unnecessary. He thought that it was just the United States trying to take over other lands. Uh, that war eventually is won by the United States, and... Uh, as a result of winning that war, the United States gains Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, um, California, all the, that area in the southwestern part of the United States. In 1849, his term ends as a U.S. Uh, representative, and he goes back to Springfield and, and continues his law practice. Um, he's the only president to have a patent for an invention. And uh, what you see pictured here is the model of that patent. This is supposed to be a riverboat, and his idea was, whoops, his idea was this, these things right here. Uh, if a boat were to happen to get uh, lodged on a sandbar where it couldn't move anymore, um, he had this idea for these little air pockets that would be filled with air uh, and could lift the boat off of the sandbar so that it could get moving again on the river. Um, not it was never made, never used in practice, but kind of interesting to know that Lincoln was um, the only president and is, is still the only president with a patent for his invention. In 1850, his second son Edward dies at the age of three. Um, around this same time, he's starting to gain a reputation as a great lawyer. Um, that same year, uh, his third son Willie is born. Uh, in 1853, Tad. Uh, is born. Uh, Thomas, I believe, is, is what his real name is, but they called him Tad because he looked kind of like a tadpole. Um, and in 1854, uh, Lincoln gets back into politics after the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Now, the Kansas-Nebraska Act was uh, proposed by a man named Stephen Douglas, and the idea was that in these new territories of Kansas and Nebraska, that the people that lived there would get to vote on whether their state would be slave or free. And Lincoln did not believe that that was um, a good idea. Uh, he believed that slavery shouldn't be expanded into the new states. And for that reason, he gets back into policy, politics. Uh, in 1856, a new party is formed uh, called the Republican Party. And uh, Lincoln actually gets some votes for vice president in 1856. Uh, he's offered to be the territorial governor of Oregon but he turns that down to continue his law practice in Illinois. In 1857, he speaks out against the Dred Scott decision. Now, the Dred Scott decision was a Supreme Court decision that said that a slave by the name of Dred Scott could not be uh, considered a citizen, and therefore um, it, it sets the tone for s the way slaves are viewed uh, in the government. And uh, because he wasn't a citizen, he couldn't sue his owner for uh, f his freedom. And so that's a big decision, and uh, Abraham Lincoln speaks out against it. Um, in 1858, he's nominated for the U.S. Senate. Uh, he tries, uh, he goes, travels around Illinois in that Senate race, taking on Stephen Douglas, a man known as the Little Giant. And they have these historical debates all across the state of Illinois. Um, and uh, people showed up, and they became almost kind of legendary, these debates. And you can see in the picture down here, you can see the political cartoon that shows Lincoln and uh, Stephen Douglas uh, boxing it out. And well, it was kind of interesting. It would have been very neat to see these debates because Abraham Lincoln was six foot four inches tall, and Stephen Douglas was like four. 411. I mean, he was just a small guy, um, and that's why he was called the Little Giant. 
Um, so it would have been neat to see just these two different uh, politicians talking and, and speaking uh, about what they believed in. Uh, in the same year, in 1858, in the State House of the uh, Illinois um, Legislature, Abraham Lincoln gives his House Divided speech uh, where he predicts that the United States will not continue to be divided, half slave and half free. He, uh, he actually goes on to say that it will become all of one thing or all of the other. Um, and so in this way, he, it's one of his more famous speeches, but it, he, he kind of predicts uh, kind of the brewing civil war that's about to take place. 